Hello everyone. On this World AIDS Day, as we reflect on those we have lost and in honoring their memory, we recognize and celebrate those aging with HIV and our long-term survivors. Today, the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services would like to announce and welcome you to learn more about the two new challenges that address the needs of people aging with HIV and our long-term survivors. I am Lieutenant Commander Nelly Gazarian with the Office of the Assistant Secretary for Health at the Office of Infectious Disease and HIV AIDS Policy, and I'm, joined, and I'm joined by my colleagues Caroline Taleb and Andrea Callow, who will introduce themselves. Caroline? Thanks. Um, hi, I'm Caroline Taleb I'm with OIDP, as Nelly said, and I'm a Senior Management Analyst there, and I also work with the Presidential Advisory Council on HIV AIDS, or PACHA. Thank you. It's nice to be here today. And I'm Andrea Callo. I'm a program analyst with the Office for Policy Analysis and Development at the Administration for Community Living, uh, also known as ACL. Uh, ACL was created uh, uh, around the fundamental principle that older adults and people of all ages with disabilities should be able to live where they choose with the people they choose and with the ability to participate fully in their communities. Uh, ACL funds services and programs uh, primarily through a network of community-based organizations, and we're really pleased to be partnering with the Office for Infectious Disease Policy on these challenges. Thank you both, and nice to be joining you both. Uh, and more formally, I am Lieutenant Commander Nelly Gazarian, a Senior Policy Analyst at OIDP. Um, but really quickly, let's talk about the challenges. These challenges were developed by OASH OIDP in partnership with ACL. Um, the very first challenge is the innovations for needs of people aging with HIV or long-term survivors in urban communities, urban being the catchphrase. And the second challenge is the 500,000 rural HIV and aging challenge, again, to address needs for those aging with HIV or long-term survivors within rural communities. Just know that each of these challenges um, are are going to address the unique needs of those living in those communities, but they're both half a million dollars each. So this is our agenda. And first, I'm going to provide just a brief overview of these challenges. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about the phases of these challenges and some resources. We'll discuss a little bit of background just to highlight some of the unique needs of people aging with HIV and long term survivors. As you all may already know, um, a growing number of older people are living with HIV or AIDS, and in fact, over half of the people with HIV in the United States are 50 years and older. So a lot of progress has been made in, sci in science, specifically in HIV diagnostics, prevention and treatment that has helped ensure that people with HIV can live into their golden years and are aging perfectly. Uh, with this new and growing population, though, we need to be proactive in addressing the unique needs that they face. We need to consider interventions that address both medical and psychosocial challenges. This may include multiple comorbidities, social isolation, increased rates of anxiety and depression, possibly, frailty, and accelerated aging, perhaps, uh, among other challenges. Here, I'll pass it on to Andrea. So in these challenges, we understand that it is not a one size fits all approach, and we really want a diversity of approaches, including uh, among uh, rural and urban communities, because we know that these are very different um, geographical locations that have different needs for the populations of older adults uh, living with HIV. So we have strategically designed two separate national challenges um, to be distinct and for applicants in both these pools. Uh, these challenges are supported by the Minority HIV AIDS Fund, and each seeks innovative efforts to help improve health outcomes for people aging with HIV and long-term survivors. And we're really focusing on racial and ethnic minorities and LGBTQ populations who are uh, disproportionately impacted by HIV. And again, in either rural or urban communities, I do want to note that applicants are uh, confined to one or the other. They can apply for both the rural and the urban challenge. Next. So a little bit about the two challenges, kind of getting into the substance. The first, uh, innovation for needs of people aging with HIV and long-term survivors in urban communities, again, for half a million dollars. 
And this is to identify those innovative and effective solutions that address the needs of people aging with HIV and with the focus on disproportionately impacted populations. Uh, they identify HIV and aging service integration. They reduce social isolation, which we know is a huge issue for those aging with HIV. Uh, improve access to healthcare services, address social determinants of health. These are things like nutrition or access to transportation or housing, uh, reduce health disparities, again, for marginalized populations like racial and ethnic minorities, employment, uh, services, training, making sure that there's access to employment to improve health and outcomes and expanding communications. Um, and dissemination of uh, scalability of existing solutions. So if there's already a solution that we know works, how do we get it out there? How do we make sure people know about it? And again, the, the key word to this is flexibility. Uh, these are not an exhaustive list. If you have an idea or you know of something that's really working that's not in this list, we really encourage you to submit it. Um, we want the, a diversity and an array of submissions. And there's more information, again, on challenge.gov to kind of go through these and give you more details, and we'll have the links to those in the end. Next slide. So uh, the half a million dollar rural HIV and aging challenge, again, Quite similar to the urban one in terms of possible submissions that we've highlighted, a focus on racial and ethnic minorities and LGBTQ uh, populations. But as I mentioned a few slides ago, uh, we, we know that rural communities are different from urban communities and that their needs are different. And we really want to make sure that their needs are adequately targeted. So. For example, when we think about the needs of rural communities, we think about issues like transportation or social isolation or access to specialists because you live, you know, um, six hour drive away from the nearest metropolitan area in a hospital with a with a specialist. So we're really excited to hear about some innovations for rural communities and um, those aging with HIV in those communities. Next slide. And I'll pass it to Caroline to get into the phases. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, and before we get into the the phases of um, of the, each challenge, um, something we uh, Andrea and Nelly and I had spoke about earlier is that we really want to get um, a, the message across that this is super easy, user friendly, um, easy to apply. We really want to hear from you and hear your ideas. And so we do want to give a shout out to challenge.gov for making the application process um, as simple as possible. I know Nellie said she walked it walked through um, with her son to see and he's six and, and it was it was um, user friendly for him. So we're really encouraging um, folks to apply and not to be um, uh, intimidated by the process. So with that said, um, each challenge um, has two phases and they're they're similar in concept. So phase one um, is is open until the end of January. And this is really the design of the concept. This is, we wanna hear your ideas um, to develop um, concepts or pilot solutions to address um, the needs of people in either urban or rural communities um, who are aging with HIV or long-term um, um, survivors. Um, phase one, there'll be up to 10 winners. Um, and each winner will receive a prize of $15,000. Um, to apply, for phase one, two, you just go to challenge.gov and the template's there for you. Um, and real quick before we go to phase two, um, a few things about phase one that along with the template that you fill out online, it's about um, up to two pages. We also are asking for a video um, submission for up to 10 minutes. So you really have an opportunity to talk about your um, idea and your concept. Um, and then for phase two, um, to apply for phase two or to be a contender for phase two, you must um, be one of the 10 winners from phase one. Um, and then this is where we really build on your concept and develop the solution, um, development of the solution and for small scale um, testing. And for phase two, there'll be up to five winners. Um, each will receive a prize of up to $70,000. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so for this, while you're beginning to think of your phase one ideas, we really want to provide some um, resources for you um, to have available on on hand here. So as you're thinking and as you're um, submitting your applications, please refer to these um, links um, for any um, help or ideas. Um, as you start preparing your applications or working on your submissions, if you have any questions or comments or concerns, please feel free to um, email, email us at hivagingchallenge at hhs.gov anytime. And again, thank you so much for your time and I'll turn it back over to Nellie.
Again, thank you everyone. And I just want to take a moment to thank our awesome director, Kay Hayes, who's the Deputy Assistant Secretary for Infectious Disease and Director at OIDP, and Edwin Walker as well, who's the Deputy Assistant Secretary for Aging at ACL, for the ongoing leadership and support with these challenges and just simply being awesome. Again, thank you everyone and thank you to my colleagues. And we hope to uh, receive your applications and hear from you.